Hello, welcome to another quick presentation uh, designed to explain uh, all the calculations you need to know with distance time graphs and velocity time graphs for the IGCC exams. Okay, so find the speed from the distance time graph. Distance time graph. First time you ever look at a graph, first thing you should do is look at the axes. Work out what the graph is of. Students always make mistakes uh, because they assume that they're looking at a distance time graph when actually it's a speed time graph or they assume vice versa. So always make sure you read and check the units of the graph. Right, so to find gradient you must find change in y divided by change in x. So draw two lines and you can draw them at any two points you want. There's no, you don't have to choose four and seven. You can choose two and eight. You can choose any two points you like. Okay, draw them straight out until they reach the line. Okay? Then draw directly down from that point. Now measure the size of the change in y. Okay, so it's gone from seven to four. Seven minus four gives us three. This is three in uh, the change in y. Okay, from seven to nine is two. Okay, nine minus seven. Write down the formula for gradient. Rise divided by run. Substitute the numbers in, 3 divided by 2, and we get an answer 1.5 meters, meters per second. Second, okay. You get a mark for the correct formula, possibly for the uh, correct answer, and for the correct units. Units are incredibly important. Okay, so this is a simple distance time graph. Now let's have a look at a speed time graph. Okay, so we're looking at a speed time graph. Okay. As always, you're looking at a graph, so read the axes. Make sure you've checked the axes because uh, you don't want to make the common mistake for most students. Okay? Right, so when you first look at a graph, it's really worth just trying to tell yourself the story of the graph. So I'm going to do that now. I'm at zero seconds, and I'm doing a speed of zero. I'm at two seconds, and I'm doing a speed of about 2.5 meters per second. I'm at four seconds, and I'm doing a speed of about five meters per second, okay? So we can see that the speed is increasing, so it is acceleration. All right, so now to find uh, the acceleration from the speed time graph, we need to find the gradient of the graph, which will be the change in speed divided by the time it took to change that speed. Think about uh, when you're watching Top Gear and they say, this Bugatti Veyron does naught to 60, which is your change in velocity in whatever it is, 2.8 seconds or something, uh, you, that's a measure of acceleration. So here a measure of acceleration will be the change in velocity, which is the change in y, divided by the time, which is the change in x. So it's a gradient question. Okay, so to measure gradient, just like you do with the distance time graph, just draw two lines out. You can put them anywhere you like. You could have put them at 2 and at 8. You could have put them anywhere. Okay, draw them out. It's better to make them widely spaced because you're more likely to get a more accurate answer. Okay, draw two lines down. Then we need to measure the size of this. So it's from 7 and 2.5. 7 minus 2.5 gives us 4.5 meters per second was the change in speed here. Okay, and the time it took for that to happen, we've got 5 and 2, so the change is 3. Okay, so write the formula. Gradient is equal to rise divided by run. Substitute the numbers in. 4.5, 3. And again, we've got 1.5 uh, meters per second per second. Okay, so um, the gradient actually was the same as the previous question, but this time the units are different. Okay, so now we need to just tidy these units up a little bit. Okay, since meters per second divided by seconds is, well, very messy, okay, maybe we could think about it in another way. If you want to divide something by two, it's the same as multiplying it by half. So think about four, think about uh, four divided by 2, and 4 multiplied by a half. Exactly the same. You're going to get 2 in each case. All right, so when we've got meters per second, and we want to put over seconds, which is very messy, we can actually say multiply by 1 over s. And now it's quite simple. Meters times 1, meters, seconds times seconds, seconds squared. So actually, the unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. Okay. Um, you don't have to remember all this business, but it's just nice to know. But you do need to remember the unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. 
Okay, so you'd get a mark for the correct uh, formula you used, well, depending on how the, uh, the questions can be marked. Uh, potentially, you can get a mark for the correct formula on showing the correct method, um, a mark for the correct answer, and a mark for the correct units. Okay, so now let's have a look at another thing. Okay, finding the distance travelled from a speed time graph. Again, you're looking at a graph, so look and check the axes, speed and time. Right. Now, if you know the formula for speed, speed is equal to distance divided by time. Okay? And if you wanted to find distance, it's just speed times time. Distance is equal to speed times time, which is not really a surprise. After all, if I tell you that I'm traveling at 8 meters every second, which is what this means, 8 meters every second, and I travel for 2 seconds, you'd expect it to be, I'd have covered 16 meters. Okay? So now if I tell you I travel for 10 seconds, and it's 8 meters every second, 10 times 8 is going to give me 80. Okay? So you could use the formula. Distance is equal to speed times time. Substitute the numbers in. It's going to be, uh, so let's just say, uh, what's the total distance traveled on the graph in 10 seconds? The speed is 8 meters per second. The time was 10. And we're just going to get 80 meters, OK? Notice, I put the formula, I put the answer, and I put the units. OK, now, actually, when you look at the graph, what I've just calculated is the area of this section. 8 times 10 will give me the area of this rectangle. And that will make things a lot easier when we get more complicated graphs, how to calculate distances travelled. So let's look at a slightly more complicated graph. OK, so again, it's a new graph, so I'm going to make sure I read the axes. I've read the axes, it's speed and time. I'm going to look at the, the line and try and work out what it's telling me. OK? It's showing me that the speed is 2, then the speed is 4, then the speed is 6. The speed is increasing, so it's an acceleration. OK. Now, it's all very well calculating distance travelled using speed is equal to distance divided by time. Rearrange it for distance is equal to speed times time. OK. But the problem here is that the speed was changing. So I can't just use 6 metres per second for my answer. What I can do, though, is take the average speed. Okay? The speed changed uniformly. Okay? So the average speed over this whole time is just going to be half of the maximum speed. So I could just say distance is going to be equal to a half the maximum speed, which was 6, multiplied by the time it took, 10. Okay? And I'll get an answer of, let's have a look, a half times 6 is 3, 3 times 10 is 30, 30 meters. Okay? And that'll be perfectly fine to get the answer. I get mark for the correct formula, a mark for the correct answer, and a mark for the correct units. But again, maybe you'll notice, uh, or remember from mathematics, that if you want to find the area of a triangle, it is just a half base multiplied by the height of the triangle. And we've just done basically the same thing. The area of this triangle is going to be, let's have a look, this is the height of it. What was the height? The height was 6. Okay. The base was 10, multiplied by a half, which is, yeah, whatever, one, 1 over 2. Okay, and actually, since multiplication doesn't matter the order, these two things mean the same thing. Okay, just a half, base times height. Area of the triangle tells me distance travelled. Okay, key point, area underneath a speed time graph will always tell you the distance travelled. Okay, let's look at one more um, complicated example, a little bit more complicated, about as complicated as it does get. Okay, so here's another speed time graph. Okay, it's broken up into sections. Again, I'm going to keep reminding you of this. When you look at a graph, read the axes. Make sure you know what you're reading. It's a speed time graph. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to try and tell myself the story of the graph. At zero seconds, it's doing zero speed. A bit later, 2 meters per second, then 4 meters per second, then 6 meters per second. So here we have a little bit of acceleration. So I'm going to just put some labels on the graph as well, just to make things a bit easy to understand. At point B onwards, the speed was 6 meters per second, 6 meters per second, 6 meters per second, 6 meters per second. 
so we have some constant speed. Let's label this little change here as C. And then at C to D, the speed was 6 meters per second, then it was 8 meters per second, then it was 10 meters per second. So again, some more acceleration. Right, now let's just say um, that I want to calculate uh, the distance traveled from A to B. Okay? Simplifying things and not uh, making my life easier, I'm just going to say, all right, I just want to find the area of this triangle. Okay? So I'm just going to use the formula for a triangle, a half base multiplied by height. I'm going to substitute the numbers in. A half times the base, which was 2, times the height, which was 6. Okay? It's going to give me an answer of, well, a half times 2 is 1, 1 times 6 is 6, so 6 meters. So 6 meters is the distance traveled from A to B, uh, you know, on this section of the graph. In the first two seconds, we covered 6 meters. Okay? Mark for the formula, mark for the answer, mark for the unit. Now what happens if someone asks me how far was travelled between C and D, or between seconds uh, 7 to 10, okay? Again, I'm going to calculate the area underneath the line, the area underneath the graph. The easiest way to do this is to break this up into a triangle here and a rectangle here, okay? So if I calculate the area of the rectangle, that's going to be Area of a rectangle is just base times height, so base times height for the rectangle. It's going to be from 7 to 10, which is 3, and it's going to be the height of this, which is 6. 3 times 6, a bit of mental maths, is 18 metres, so that's just this section. And now I want to add it to the area of this triangle. Okay, so let's have a look. Half base multiplied by height. The base of the triangle is from 7 to 10. Again, it's 3. The height of the triangle is from 6 to 10, so it's 4. All this multiplied by a half. Okay, so a half times 3 times 4. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12. Divided by 3 times 4, yeah, it's 12. Divided by 2 is going to give me 6 meters. Okay, now I just have to have the sum of the two 18 meters for the rectangle plus the 6 meters. The little triangle gives me a total distance travelled of 24 metres. Okay, I've set it out so that someone could have followed what I'm doing, and also the sketching on the graph makes it clear to the examiner how I, I arrived at my answer. And if I did make a mistake anywhere, I'm still likely to get some marks for showing that I understood the concept. Okay, so I would get a mark for the answer and for the units, and if the exam, if I failed to get this correct, the examiner may, may give me a mark for showing uh, some understanding of how to achieve the correct answer. Okay, so that's about as complicated as I think it gets in IGCC. Okay, if you were asked the total distance travelled by the object in this entire time, you'd have to add this triangle to this rectangle to this rectangle to that triangle, and then you could work out the entire distance travelled. Okay? Um, if they wanted to know the average speed for the entire journey, Average speed is just going to be equal to the total distance travelled, which will be the put total d on the space. Total distance travelled, which will just be the area under the entire graph. This triangle plus this rectangle plus this rectangle plus this triangle, divided by the total time, and you'd get the average speed. Okay, so that's probably everything you'd need to know for IGCC. Okay, so there's only three things we we've really learned today. Um, firstly, that the gradient of a distance time graph will tell you speed. Since you're doing meters divided by seconds, you can see from the unit that you're going to get it is speed. The gradient of a speed time graph is going to tell you acceleration, which would be meters per second over seconds, which, as we discussed earlier, actually becomes meters per second squared, which is the unit of acceleration. And the area underneath the speed time graph will tell you distance covered. And since in order to calculate the area underneath a speed time graph, you have to do meters per, meters per second, whoops, meters per second multiplied by seconds, you can see that meters, seconds over seconds, seconds cancel. We're just left with meters, and you're going to get distance. Okay? So uh, these are the three things you need to remember. And always read the axis of the graph. Okay? 
I hope you found this useful, and if you have, please subscribe, and any comments or suggestions are welcome. Thanks for watching.